Magnolia Mounds started as a uh, Spanish land grant given to a man, an Irishman named James Hillen in 1786. Um, of course, it was given to James Hillen by the Spanish government. Uh, Spain, of course, owned uh, Louisiana, the Louisiana Territory at this time. The reason why Magnolia Mound started off as a Spanish land grant was because in 1763, before the end of the French and Indian War, France, which at that time owned the entire, terry of Louis entire territory of Louisiana, gave the western portion of the territory to the Spanish government. This was to prevent the British from gaining all of France's former colonies just in case France lost the war. Well, France did lose the war in the, uh, in the area east of the river including us here in the West Florida parishes, fell under British domination. However, by 1781, Spain had conquered all of the West Florida parishes and reclaimed her former colony of Florida. And so it was in 1786 that James Hillen was given the Spanish land grant because the Spanish government wanted to um, develop this area and they gave these land grants as a means to do so. Of course, it was up to the uh, person who was given the land grant to clear the land, establish settlements, and of course, to farm the land. He grew indigo and tobacco, and in 1791, after the death of his wife, he uh, sold the plantation to another Irishman. Uh, his name was John Joyce, and he, um, he and his French Creole wife, Constance Rochon Joyce, they uh, actually um, lived in Mobile with their two children. Now, even though the Joyces did not live here at Magnolia Mound, uh, they still built a four-room house that serves as the foundation of the current Magnolia Mound plantation. The house was later uh, added on to um, and fixed up a bit um, during the uh, early part of the 19th century um, under Armand de Plantier's care. Armand de Plantier was a Frenchman. He came to America to fight in the American Revolution. He actually fought alongside the General Lafayette and the uh, two men became comrades in arms. Magnolia Mound is a fine example of Creole vernacular style architecture. Now Creole vernacular style ar architecture was influenced by many different cultures, building techniques and architectural styles. Now some of the cultural influences of Creole style homes like Magnolia Mound come from places like West Africa, the West Indies, France, Spain and Portugal and as those styles of homes were brought over to uh, South Louisiana, they were modified a bit to fit Louisiana's uh, climate. Some of the distinguishing characteristics of Creole homes are for one, they are built up on the uh, raised foundations to allow for uh, flood protection and also cross ventilation. And they were also built with the wraparound galleries. Um, now the wraparound galleries could have been used as an extra room uh, on very, very hot days. And they could have also been used um, as a hallway since there are no interior hallways inside of Creole homes. Now, when you're talking about Creole, the person, we here at Magnolia Mound um, define a Creole originally from the 17th to 18th century as a slave who was born here in the colony. Now, later in the 18th century and on and up into the 19th century, the term Creole was also being used to differentiate between white settlers. It differentiated between those born here in the colony from their ancestors born back in Europe. So for example, Constance Rochon Joyce was a French Creole because she was born here in the colony, but her ancestors had been born back in France. Now as the term Creole became more integrated into colonial society, hierarchies or classes within the group began to emerge, and there were three main classes of Creoles. The first and highest class of Creole were of course white Catholics of French, Spanish, or German descent. Of course, Constance would have been a member of this uh, class of Creole. The middle class of Creole were uh, free people of color. Now, free people of color were black people who were either born free, freed by their masters, or in some cases, they were actually able to purchase their own freedom. Now, free people of color were allowed to own property, run plantations, and even own slaves. Now, most free people of color here in Louisiana were skilled artisans like blacksmiths or carpenters, and that's usually the role that they served here. And of course, the lowest class of Creole were the slaves who were born here in the colony. This parlor or salon was modified during the de Plantier time by skilled slaves, artisans, and carpenters. Now, when the de Plantiers modified this room, 
They replaced the original beam ceiling with this unusual cove ceiling. Handmade molding and a rosette were added to the ceiling, which was then wallpapered. And during our original restoration of the house, we were able to identify the colors of the room that you now see. We also discovered a scrap of the vermicelli wallpaper that you see here on the walls. This, our, our research dated this wallpaper back to France in about 1805 to 1810. Now because of the bousillage walls and the expensive wallpaper, mirrors and paintings were usually hung from the molding using a decorative knob. This of course protected the walls from getting holes or marks in them. Also, in every room and out on the gallery, a chair rail was installed to protect the walls from the furniture. Now, an interesting way of tracing the cultural identity of a home is by the house's fireplace. For example, Creole-style homes like Magnolia Mound usually place their fireplaces on interior walls like this one, while Anglo-style homes would have placed their fireplaces on the opposite ends of their houses. We are now in the boys' bedroom here at Magnolia Mount, and of course, being a Creole-style house, there are no interior hallways, so every room had access to the gallery that could have been used as a hallway. Now, when the Duplantiers made the changes to Magnolia Mound, the room that we are in actually used to be two rooms, as you can see by the large beam in the center of the ceiling. Uh, they removed the, the uh, wall that divided this room and made one large bedroom that, of course, all of the boys shared. Now, over here, we have left this wall exposed to show you the construction of the house. The house was built with cypress wood beams. Cypress wood is a native wood to Louisiana, so therefore it is, it is very durable and it is actually a natural insect repel repellent. Now, the house was built or was constructed using uh, the mortise and tenon construction technique with the wooden peg joinery. Now, to fill in between the beams, they used a material that we in Louisiana call bousillage. Bousillage is a mixture of Spanish moss and mud, and then it's covered in plaster and either painted or wallpapered over. Bousillage is a fantastic insulator, but it is very, very fragile. This is the dining room. Now this dining room was actually added by the Duplantiers when they made their renovations to the house in the early 19th century. Now here we have a uh, very interesting piece on our ceiling here. This is called a punkah. Now the uh, punkah originated in India and sometimes here in South Louisiana it was called a shoe fly. And the uh, punkah did exactly what it says it did. It shooed the flies away. There was of course it was attached to a rope here, and in the corner, a slave child would have stood or perhaps um, sat down and pulled on the cord to operate the punkah. It would have swung back and forth, shooing the flies away, and also acting as a fan on uh, the hot Louisiana afternoons. Over here, we have two vases depicting the General Lafayette. Now, in the early 1800s, President Thomas Jefferson asked Armand to serve as a real estate agent to purchase land for the general here in Louisiana. This was in recognition of the General Lafayette service to the Americans during the American Revolution. Now, Th Thomas Jefferson most certainly asked Armand because of the men's connection with one another and their friendship that they, de that they developed during the American Revolution. Now, in 1824, uh, the General Lafayette was invited to visit the United States. He made his way to Louisiana in 1825, where Armand served as his escort. Now, the General Lafayette was um, given a parade down here in uh, Baton Rouge, and of course, Armand most certainly attended, but we do not know if the General ever made it here to Magnolia Mound. In the 1960s, uh, Magnolia Mound, the house and the uh, property, was um, purchased by a uh, Texas-based uh, uh, developer, and he had plans to uh, actually tear down the house, which at that point had fallen into uh, disrepair, and uh, build uh, an apartment building here. Well, 
uh, when the community caught wind of the developers' plans, they rallied around the house. Uh, 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 the Junior League, um, historians over, from, uh, over at LSU, um, basically the community BREC, the Parks and Recreation Commission as well, they all rallied around the house and they convinced um, a judge to allow BREC to purchase the house, um, which BREC did. They saved the house. And there was about a 10 year long renovation to the house. It was completed um, late 1970s, early 1980s. And of course the house at that point was open to the public for tours. And, and it's been an ongoing project since then.